Well, hello. Am I speaking with Reinhard Gensel? Yes, speaking. Yes. Well, first of all, many congratulations on the award of the Nobel Prize. Well, thank you. It was <laughs> completely unexpected, and I'm, you know, wow. <laughs> I'm a <in> cloud 17. <laughs> how lovely. Um, how, how did the news reach you? Where were you? I was in my my office, in fact, uh, uh, working uh, as we do these days uh, in a virtual conference uh, on a hiring of another Max Planck Institute when I was called, and and uh, and <laughs> the uh, almost stereotypic uh, t telephone call took place, which I never would have thought I ever get, which is this is Stockholm. <laughs> So, so they actually say this is Stockholm calling. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. And th this prize is a lovely marriage of experiment and theory, which is so much the way that physics proceeds, isn't it? Oh, yes. No, I think that's that's a very strong theme in the black hole research. And if you think about more broadly in terms of gravity, I mean, here, here, you know, we celebrated a few years ago uh, the theory of general relativity. In fact, I was in Berlin for that uh, ceremony. A uh, hundred years later, we are, we are, the, the research on, on, on gravity and, and, and black holes is at the, at the very core of, of front, forefront of physics in several several domains, gravitational waves, and, and, and so forth. So it's, it's ex extremely exciting. And it, 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 took, it took an enormous amount of effort to, to discover this uh, black hole at the centre of our galaxy. <laughs> Yeah, well, you see, this goes back, in my case, to another Nobel laureate whose uh, second father, uh, or second son, I feel <laughs> I am, that's Charles Towns, who, who got the prize in 64 for the, the laser and the maser, and then turned astronomer. And he, in fact, uh, after the discovery of the quasars in the 60s, felt that, uh, okay, well, maybe one should, one should look. And the galactic center is then so close. Uh, but you can't look at it in the visible. So, so Charlie then developed the first uh, instrumentation to look at basically the Doppler shifts of gas. And I, I joined him then as a postdoc and then a colleague in Berkeley. And so we started working on this problem uh, back in the 1980s. So that's 40 years ago. <laughs> uh, and yes, it took a you know a, a lot and lot of patience, luck, and and always always trying hard to get better and better and better. Mm. It's a lovely il illustration of the way that research hands from person to person, that it, it, it grows and it's such a personal thing, really. Yep. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you image the black hole at the centre of the galaxy, what do you see? Well, I mean, we are, we are sensing, I mean, what we are doing, we are using uh, electromagnetic waves in the mostly infrared uh, range uh, with the telescopes of the European Southern Observatory in Chile. And initially, we used one of the big eight-meter telescopes. Uh, then you have to combat the Earth's atmosphere and make sure that the blurring of the, of the, of the images is removed. That's called adaptive optics. So that was sort of the first phase of innovation in the, in the late 90s, uh, uh, but that's not sufficient to come very close to the galactic center. So our most recent uh, uh, innovation has been to combine four of these telescopes to what one calls an interferometer. So there's four eight-meter eight-meter telescopes, and with that we can then sense the motions of uh, uh, stars. Is, uh, which are orbiting the black hole with exquisite position. Uh, we also see actually gas in in the very close in the accretion zone around the black hole. Mm. Uh, that's about as close as you can get because then any closer, uh, all material has to disappear <laughs> uh, in the black hole. So in that sense, we are seeing not it, but we are seeing, so to speak, uh, uh, we, are, we are sensing its gravity. Uh, and we are seeing, you know, gas and stars moving around it, and just by how they, how the gas moves, how the stars move, we can then infer very with high precision uh, uh, what it is, and that it must be a black hole. And also, in fact, that general relativity holds even in this super strong regime of of curvature. Mm -hmm. Yes, sensing its impact on the surroundings, and it, it's extremely active just at the moment, isn't it? 
Um, it's a little more active than it was, but on the scale of, of active black holes, it is, a, it is a dwarf. It doesn't do much. I mean, it's under luminous compared to what it could be. Let's be, let's be glad that this, this is so, because uh, <laughs> indeed, if, 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 if supermassive black holes get fed at the, at the maximum rate, they can destroy their own galaxy systems, and they do. They have, in particular, in the, in the past. So that's why uh, massive black holes turn out to be uh, such an, an important uh, regulator, if you like, in the ecosystems of, of, of galaxies. And I suppose one point to make is that this takes us back to Einstein and how extraordinary it was that general relativity is so precisely defined so much around us. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, it's incredible. But, you know, we all, all, all of physics, of course, suspects it must be wrong somewhere, you know, certainly on the smaller scales. Now, those scales we cannot reach. Uh, but at least uh, another option would have been that it, uh, it is mass dependent and, and, and that we have now tested. And, and so, you know, we can be sure uh, that that the theory is right. Now, to really be sure that what what is called the car metric is correct to the innermost uh, region of where you can trace matter, uh, we still don't know that, and the gravitation waves haven't done that either. So, so it, the story will go on experimentally. I would say for at least another one or two decades. I predict that the most likely final triumph will be a space mission with gravitational waves uh, seeing an spiral of a, a solar mass star into a massive black hole. That, that probably would clinch the case. I, unfortunately, I, I'm afraid I won't, I won't be there. The mission is being studied by the European Space Agency for some time now. And uh, it's a very expensive, very, very difficult ma- uh, mission. Uh, there will be a collaboration with NASA too, but I assume that the Europeans will lead. And, and, and the most likely slot for launch will be in the late 30s. I would I would expect. It's been it's been a huge pleasure speaking to you. Thank you very much indeed. Okay. I, I guess you are about to have a total onslaught of the press and well wishers. How do you feel about that? Well, okay, we'll see how we do on that. Yeah, I know. I I, I guess we'll, we'll I'll I'll try to do my best. Uh, but it's a, a great distinction. It's just wonderful.